Um, hello everyone. Um, this week's workshop we're actually looking at transverse shear and shear flow. And so um, in the previous workshop we actually looked at elastic and inelastic or plastic bending. And um, just remember that when we design our structures or our buildings we, um, we design for bending stresses. Okay, But then we don't design for shear. We actually check for shear and we check that the, there's adequate thickness so that the members don't fail in shear. Okay, so uh, what is transverse shear and shear flow? So if we have our simply supported B, and if you've got your externally acting load P, naturally you'll have reaction forces. And if you take a cut through the B, you can find for the internal shear force V. And that shear force V is actually our transverse shear force. Just remember, transverse shear is denoted by a capital V. Lowercase v is actually for uh, deflection. And so what is actually shear flow? So to understand what shear flow is, we need to have a look at the cross-sectional element. And so let's say, let's suppose that this beam is actually an I-beam. Okay, and so the cross-section would look like this. And because we've got this shear force V acting, we'll have a shear flow throughout our cross-section. Okay, it'll go down, it'll go that way, it'll go that way. And that shear flow can be mapped, so by a little shear flow distribution. Okay, so that's our shear flow distribution. It's like a stress block when we did bending. And so if you end this Q, is our shear flow. And what you can see is that the maximum shear flow occurs somewhere in the web. And so when you have um, members, you need to ensure that there's an adequate thickness in the web so that you prevent it from failing in shear. And so what we have on the right hand side is a formula to find your average shear stress. Tau average is equal to VQ over IT. Okay? And uh, VQ over I is the formula for shear flow Q. V is our transfer shear force. Capital Q is the first moment of area. And the first moment of area is equal to the term we have in the numerator for the formula that we use in finding the centroid of a geometric cross-section. Okay, so Q is equal to some AI multiplied by the Y bar, the local centroid of the partition solid. Uh, second moment of area should be familiar to you because we covered that in week one and week two of our workshops. Now this T is actually the thickness along the cut. Okay. And um, it'll become more clear when I solve an example in, in the following slide. So this is my introduction to transverse shear and shear flow. So today I'm going to cover two examples. Example number one is actually trivial, but it's very fundamental to your understanding. Okay, so we have a T-section, we're given its dimensions, we want to find the shear stress at points A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, and we're told that the shear force is 37 kilonewtons. Now, we have, if we're interested in the shear stress at a particular point, we need to take a cut there. Okay, and we take a cut in such a way that the cut is perpendicular to our shear flow. All right. And so, if we're interested in point E, we have to cut in such a way that it's perpendicular to the shear flow. Shear flow is going horizontally, so the cut will be vertical. All right. And if we're looking at elements above the neutral axis, then we have to look at the solid that starts from the top edge. If we were looking at uh, points below the neutral axis, then it has to start from the bottom edge. This is the cut we take, and so this is the solid. All right. 
just remember um, solving the shear stress for point B and C is tr tricky. Okay, so if you were to solve for point B, you cannot, in this circumstance, for this particular cross section, you cannot solve. You can only solve for this. Okay, you cannot solve this. You cannot take a cut at B and solve for this. Primarily because tau equal VQ over IT has a limitation. The limitation is that the thickness of the cut has to be constant throughout the entire solid. You cannot have a change in the thickness. Okay? So, for this thing, you don't have a uniform thickness. It changes over here from a flange to a web. And so you cannot have a look at point B or a cut at B from the bottom solid. You have to look from the top solid. And that's the tricky part about this. Okay. So there's a step-by-step -step procedure to doing this. The first thing you solve is the is the parameters that you can find for the entire cross-section. And that would be the location of the neutral axis and the second moment of area. Luckily in this question, we're already told what the location of the neutral axis, and that's 47 mils above the base. And so we have to calculate our second moment of area about its own centroid. I hope you remember that from week one. And if you do the calculation by using the parallel axis theorem, you'll get that the second moment of area is this much. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start for point A. So we take a cut at point A, and we do so that it's perpendicular to the shear flow. And the, so the solid we get, starting from the top edge, is this. And this is the solid that we have to find our first moment of area for. Right, so QA is equal to AI Y bar I. The area is just 50 mils multiplied by 8. We're told that it's uh, 50 mils from the top edge. Now this Y bar is the distance from the centroid of our solid of interest to the neutral axis, okay? So that's the distance. So we know that um, the cut AA is 93 mils from the neutral axis, so it's going to be 93 plus 50 over 2. And you get 47,200 cubic millimeters. The thickness of the slice is just the thickness of our web, and that's 8 mils. So that's easy. So tau A is QA to A. So given that the shear force is 37 kilonewtons, convert that to newtons. get 19.5 newtons per millimeter squared. That's the same as 19.5 megapascals. Okay. So that's point A. Let's have a look at point B. So point B is actually located at the neutral axis. Okay. And so when we have the point that's um, actually at the neutral axis, you can either look at it from the top edge or the bottom edge, given that there is no change in the section that we're looking at in terms of its thickness. Okay, And so for this geometric section, for a T section, you cannot look at the bottom edge or the solid of interest starting from the bottom edge because we've got this thickness varying from the width of the flange to uh, the thickness of the web. Okay, so we have to look from the top edge to our cut, which is BB dash at the neutral axis. So, 
that's uh, cut and that is the same as the neutral axis so our solid of interest is that on the top edge that's 143 mils so QB is equal to 143 multiplied by 8, that's the area, and the distance is just this distance, okay, and that's 143 over 2. So you get 81,796 millimeters cubed. The thickness of our slice is just the thickness of our new flange, sorry, of our web, which is 8 mils. So if you plug it into the formula, VQ over IT, you'll get a shear stress of 33.7 megapascals. Okay? So just remember, your first moment of area varies because you've got different solids of interest. But the second moment of area is constant okay because it's for the entire cross section now point C is very tricky and this the if you understand how to solve for point C then I'm pretty sure you're good to go for all the other examples point C is interesting because it's at the boundary it's at the boundary of where the flange and the web is located and so, and because it's, uh, point C is below our neutral axis, and because our cut is horizontal, the solid of interest then becomes the entire flange. Okay? Remember, the solid of interest varies on how you take the cut. Alright? C. C is at the boundary of our flange and web, and so our solid is the entire flange. Flange has a width of 20 and 220 mils, thickness of 8 mils. Okay, and we know that the neutral axis is located 47 mils above the base. This is the centroid. So if you want to calculate Q, C, it's going to be 220 multiplied by 8. That's the area of our solid. And the distance between the centroid and the neutral axis is going to be 47 minus 8 on 2. And that numerically comes out to be 75,680 millimeters cubed. Now the tricky part is determining what thickness to use when we calculate our shear. Because C, point C lies at the boundary, the thickness of the slice has to be the minimum value between the width of the flange and the thickness of the web. Okay. The reason why we pick the minimum thickness is because we want a maximum shear value. All right. So that comes up to be just eight mils. So tau c. approximately equal to 31.2 megapascals. Okay, so for TC you use the thickness of the web, but then when you calculate your first moment of area, 
it has to be the area of this block, okay? All right. So let's have a look at point D. Now point D is interesting because point D is now in the flange. Okay? And because it's in the flange and because the shear flow in the flange is going horizontally, you have to cut perpendicular to that so it's a vertical cut. And so the solid of interest now is starting from the bottom edge. So it's going to be this half of the flange. Okay, so that's our area of interest. So consider point. D. That's where the neutral axis is located. Sorry, that's where the centroid is located. Halfway of the thickness of the flange. And this width is actually half of 220, so it's 110 mils. And we know that the neutral axis makes 43 millimeters with our centroid. QD is the area of the flange or the area of the solid of interest which is half the flange 110 mm over 8 and the distance is 43 okay between the centroid and the neutral axis. So you get 37,840 millimeters cubed. Uh, the thickness is just the thickness, the thickness of the slice is just the thickness of the flange, which is 8 mils. So tau D, we Q D of I T D should come out to be 15.6 megapascals. You can solve for point E on your own for practice. It's the same solid. Okay, except that this width is 55 mils. You get that tau E should be 7.8 megapascals. Okay, that's what you should get. I'll leave this for your own practice because it's the same as D. Okay, so that's the first example. The second example that I want to demonstrate is this. So if you've got two different ways of constructing an I-beam, one is by gluing the members over here and here in such a way that you glue your web to the flange members. The other orientation or the other way of constructing your I-beam is by nailing your flange member into the web, okay? But then it's still a connection, okay? In the, in this case, we're not nail, we're not using nails. We're using glue, okay? So this is how we glue our members in orientation B. This is how we're going to glue them in orientation A. And we want to know in which of the connections will we have a lesser stress. That's a shear stress. And the interesting thing is that both the I-beams have the same uh, dimensions. And um, they both have symmetry about the horizontal and vertical axis. Horizontal, centroidal and, horizon and vertical uh, centroidal axis. Okay. And so you don't need to check for both of these points where you have to glue them. It is sufficient. To check for just one of them and assume that it applies with the, for all the other uh, glued connections. Similar reasoning for orientation B. 
you've got that symmetry along the centroidal vertical and the centroidal horizontal axis. And so it's sufficient to say that if you can uh, calculate for one of these glue joints, it should be the same for the remaining because of that geometric symmetry. And so our points of interest for this question would be the points where we have to glue them. So it's for this and this. So clearly, if you're looking at this point, it's above the neutral axis. It should be. Your neutral axis should be somewhere over here. And so you have to start from the top edge to the point where we take our cut. And so for A, this is our solid of interest. Okay. Now for B, this is the joint that we want to have a look. And so, uh, shear flow should be going this direction. This is our cut. And so, it's above the neutral axis. And this is the solid of interest. All right. So, because both these solids have the same dimensions, you'll find the first thing you do is calculate your second moment of area and locate the neutral axis, you'll get that Ixx is equal to 291.455 times 10 to the power of 6 millimeters to the power of 4. And that's for both the I-beams in orientation A and B. Okay. Let's have a look at cross section A. That's our cut. Neutral axis is down here. This is the solid of interest. Going to have its centroid over there. Okay. And if you do your calculations correctly, you should find that this distance between the centroid of the neutral axis is 194 mils. All right. These dimensions are given. So QA is equal to the area of our solid multiplied by the distance with the, between the centroid and the neutral axis. And that comes out to be 6, six so millimeters cubed. All right. Now, when we look at the thickness of the slice, it's at the boundary between the flange and the wedge. And so if we want the maximum shear stress, we have to look at the minimum thickness between F and thickness of the web. And so it would be the thickness of the web, which is 25 mils. Okay. One interesting point to make over here is that the thickness of the flange is 12 mils and the thickness of the web is 25 mils. And you see that the web is thicker to ensure that there is an adequate thickness to prevent against a shear failure. All right. QA, QA. So V is given to be 40 kilonewtons. We just calculated our first moment of area. By now, I'm assuming and I'm hoping that you all can confidently and comfortably calculate your second moment of area and locate your neutral axis. It's going to be very important you do that because I and Y bar is very much needed in bending and in shear. Okay. So that's uh, for cross section A. And let's have a look at cross section B.
So I've told you the glue is the joint. So we take that cut. So this becomes our solid of interest. You don't have a centroid in the middle of the flange. Thickness of the flange is 12 mils. This distance is actually 200 minus 25 to account for the web divided by 2, and that's 87.5 mils. That's your neutral axis, and this distance, if calculated correctly, should be equal to 194 mils. Same as the value in orientation A. Okay, so QB that's 87.5 multiplied by 12, and that distance between the centroid and neutral axis is that. So that becomes 236. Uh, 203,000, oh, never mind, millimeters cubed. Twenty-three thousand seven hundred. Okay, tau B is VQ on IT. Forty kilonewtons two zero three seven zero zero two hundred ninety one point four five five times ten to the power of six multiplied by twelve. Uh, the thickness of the slice is just the thickness of the flange. Okay, it's trivial in this case. You should get two point three three MPA. So the answer is that um, shear stress in glue for cross section B is less than that for A. Okay, so that's the answer. Remember, shear flow and shear stress calculations are pretty much straightforward okay so um, do practice with the examples feel free to email me you all have my email okay or ask questions on the forum so that's it for this week um, enjoy the enjoy the re remainder of the week and uh, see you next time